All right, I want to talk about remainder questions with you guys because I've seen a lot of students, even the brightest students, get these questions wrong. And I really think the biggest reason is that they always, you know, they rush to the calculator and they think that the calculator is going to help them get to the right answer. And actually, I think the complete opposite is true, is that if anything, the calculator is going to hurt you when you do these questions. So this is one situation where you don't want to use the calculator. Let's take a look at a question. I'm going to show you how uh, you can kind of approach these. Uh, this one says... When 16 is divided by x, the remainder is 4. What is one possible value of x plus 1? So when you get these questions, and you know it's a remainder question, obviously, it said remainder, you got to think like pre-K, you know, first or second grade remainder. So what I mean by that, you know, 3 into 8. Well, 3 goes into 8 twice, you know, with a remainder of 2. That's the type of a remainder we're talking about. So you can't use the calculator. If you get decimals, things will get all screwed up. Okay? So that's why you got, you got to think like this. So this one is saying when 16 is divided by x, we get a remainder of 4. So a nice little trick or something you can do is you can take the remainder here and you can add or subtract. In this case, we're going to be subtracting uh, from the number. And that should give us a number that will work. Let me show you what I mean. So we can take the remainder of 4, let's subtract it from 16 to get x. So 16 minus 4 equals 12. And let's see if that works. 16 divided by 12. Well, yeah, 12 goes into 16 once. And what's left over? We have a remainder of 4. So that's a nice little handy thing you could do to try and find the number. So if we know x is 12, we want to know what is one possible value of x plus 1. We're just going to add 1, so we get a final answer of 13. Okay, so that's kind of one situation where you can play with the remainder to help you find the answer. Let's look at another one. Okay, so we have when k is divided by 3, the remainder is 2. What is the remainder when 2k is divided by 3? So again, if we wanted to write this out, it says k divided by 3 and we get a remainder of 2. Well this time we can add the remainder back to the bottom number to get k. So we get k equals 5 and let's see if that makes sense. 5 divided by 3 3 goes into 5 once and what's left over? We have a remainder of 2. So when k equals 5, that works out. We can use that. So now we want to know what is the remainder when 2k is divided by 3. So 2k is going to equal 10 because we said k is 5. So what's the remainder when 10 is divided by 3? And what's the remainder? Well, 3 goes into 10 three times, right? And you have one left over. So you should have a remainder of 1. And that would be your final answer. You you know, on, on the SAT, you write down 1 and, and grid in 1. And I, I don't really have a great answer for you if you're asking, uh, when do I add and when do I, when do I subtract with the remainder? You kind of just got to play around. I don't want to make too many rules up. But just know you can work with the remainder and kind of play around with the numbers to find another number that works. Okay, so it just takes some practice. Uh, let's try this one. I got a little crammed when I wrote this, but you should be able to see it. This one says, for all positive integers a and b, let a triangle hb be defined as the whole number remainder when a is divided by b. So this, what that means is this whole thing is the remainder when a is divided by b. Almost, it's kind of like a function question. If 36HB is equal to 0, which of the following cannot equal B? So the question you have, you have to really ask yourself is, what does this mean? So what that's saying is, when 36 is divided by B, the remainder is 0. So we can write that out, just kind of 36 divided by B, I get a remainder of 0. Okay, and it may be a little hard to, to see what that means. We might have to go back to the rule. But we just know that this thing divided by this thing, that whole expression means the remainder. So, 
36 divided by what's going to give me a remainder of 0? Well, 36 divided by any of its factors should give you a remainder of 0, right? 36 divided by 9, it goes in evenly, right? So you get 4. There's no remainder. 36 divided by 4, kind of doing the opposite, equals 9, right? So there's no remainder. So we're looking for which of the following cannot equal b. So we know it can equal 4, it can equal 9, 18 goes into 36, right? So I'll just write it, 36 divided by 18 is 2. So we have a, a remainder of 0. What about 28, though? 28 does not go into 36 evenly, right? I'll just write it over here. So that was okay, that was okay, that was okay. 36 divided by 28 we're going to have a remainder, right? It goes in once with a remainder of 8. 1, remainder 8. So since we have a remainder of 8, this has to be your answer. And even if you look at A, 36 divided by 36, there's no remainder, right? Kind of a tough problem. you got to get used to this, this whole idea of a remainder here. I mean, this one's a little harder because it's, it's almost similar to a function question. But uh, again, you got to think like second, third grade when you're thinking of remainders. Don't use the calculator. It's going to screw you up. All right, the one that I want to end with, and I tried to make these get slightly harder each time, and uh, we'll see if this one, and this might be the hardest. Maybe the last one was the hardest one. Uh, this one says, when the positive integer xy is divided by 5, the remainder is 4. Which of the following statements must be true? Okay, so it's a positive integer. So let's write our little expression here, xy divided by 5. And we're saying that means the remainder, I'll just abbreviate, is 4. So maybe what we'll do is in this case, we'll add the remainder back to 5. So let's say xy equals 9. Well, let's test it. 9 divided by 5. Well, it works out, right? Because 5 goes into 9 once. And what's the remainder? The remainder is 4. So xy can equal 9. The question is, does it have to equal 9? Well, there should be some other number bigger than a 9 that when you divide by 5, you get 4. And if you try out some numbers, what if xy equals, oh, say, 14? Well, what's 14 divided by 5? It goes in twice, but there's a remainder of, of a, sorry, a remainder of brain fart. Uh, there's a remainder of four. So even with that one, right, because five, ten, and then it goes in twice with a remainder of four. So xy can equal 14. So it doesn't have to equal nine. It can equal nine. It can also equal 14. So let's see if we can eliminate some choices here. Which of the following statements must be true? Does xy equal 9? It can, but it doesn't always have to be true. So that's gone, because it can equal 14. xy is even. Well, it can be even, but it also can be odd. So that's gone. And then that one's gone for the same reason. It can be odd, but it can also be even. xy is never prime. Hmm. Well, let's try and find another number. And you know what? I'm going to move this up just a little bit, and hopefully you guys can see this. Let's try and find the next bigger number that xy can equal. Well, what's another number that divided by 5 it gives you a remainder of 4? Well, maybe you go to 15 and add 4. So xy equals 19. And let's test it. 19 divided by 5, 5, 10, 15. So 5 goes into 19 three times, and what's the remainder? We get a remainder of 4. So that number works as well. And what do you know? xy is prime. So this is false, and the only one that's left is e. All right. So this was a tough problem, but I want to show you that there's a couple of different ways you can use the remainder to get to the right explanation.